Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be evaluating the product of a complex number and the conjugate of another complex number. So we're given z times w bar equals 7 minus i and we're supposed to evaluate z bar times w. As you know, z bar represents the complex conjugate of z and we're going to go over those definitions and I'll be presenting at least two methods. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about the definition of z bar or w bar. So if z is a complex number that can be written as a plus bi, then z bar, obviously uh, Wolfram Alpha writes it a little differently with a little star, but z bar is the more common form, is defined as a minus bi. So if you negate the imaginary part of a complex number, then you do get the complex conjugate of that number. Make sense? So by using that definition, we're going to be able to solve this equation or whatever the question is. So we're given z times w bar equals 7 minus i. And we're supposed to evaluate z bar times w. I know some of you are probably getting impatient at this point and finding some answers, but let's go ahead and see how this uh, rolls out. So I'm going to do the following. Since we have two complex numbers here, I'm going to name the first one a plus bi as I did before. And so z is going to be a plus bi and w is going to be c plus di. Okay. A, b, c, d can be different. Doesn't matter. They can be real as well. But let's go ahead and plug this into our equation. So we do have this equation so we can hopefully find something about a b c d and then apply it to the second equation okay so if you substitute a plus b i w bar is going to be c minus d i by definition and then set the product equal to 7 minus i when you multiply two complex numbers you know how to do it you just uh, separate the real and imaginary parts after distributing so it's going to be a times c minus a d i plus b c i and finally b d i squared with a minus sign here because plus and minus and that should be 7 minus i. One thing that you should never ever forget or at least one thing to remember is i squared and i squared is always equal to what? Negative 1, right? So if you do that you're going to get positive b d from here and then you can add that to a c because that's what makes up the real part of this complex number. So it's going to be AC plus BD plus, now we have BC minus AD. I want to write the BC first because it's plus sign. I equals 7 minus I. So what do you know about equality of two complex numbers? It just means that real parts equals real parts and imaginary parts similarly equals imaginary parts. Make sense? So this is supposed to be 7. And this is supposed to be, now look at the coefficient of i on the right hand side and you'll find negative 1. Be careful. Okay, let's go ahead and write this as a system. A, B, C, D don't have to be integers, but they are, probably are, right, at this point. You can think about it that way, because if they weren't, then we probably wouldn't get a nice answer like 7 minus i, but that's still possible. Anyways, this is our system of equations. Are we going to be able to solve it? not unless a, b, c, d are given as integers. Because the problem is we have four variables, but only two equations. So we're kind of short of two equations. So what do we do? Just leave it like that. And look at the second equation. That's the trick, right? Sometimes you have to leave something aside, and then until something comes up, you have to leave that alone. So let's go ahead and take a look at z bar times w. That's what we're trying to find out. But what is that equal to in terms of A, B, C, D, right? We can write it. Z is A plus B, I, remember? So Z bar is going to be A minus B, I. And W is C plus D, I. Remember, that's how we set it up. And we don't know what this equals, right? That's what we're trying to find out, actually. What is this equal to? But we do have a system of equations, which is hopefully going to be helpful. Let's go ahead and distribute, just like before, A, C plus A, D, I minus bci minus bdi squared. Again, i squared is negative 1, so this is going to turn into positive bd. Okay? So this gives us ac plus bd plus 
AD minus BC multiplied by I. And we want to know what this equals. But take a look at this. We do know what AC plus BD is, which is the real part. So it looks like when we switch those bars around, the real part did not change. Why would it? Because imaginary part is the only part that's changed when you conjugate a complex number, right? So we can go ahead and directly substitute this. AC plus BD is equal to 7. So we're going to replace it with 7. But what about AD minus BC? Do we know what it is? No, but we do know BC minus AD is negative 1. BC minus AD is negative 1. So the question is, if we know BC minus AD, can we find AD minus BC? And the answer is yes, absolutely, because you just have to negate it. If you multiply both sides by negative 1, let me go ahead and make some space here if I can, so I can kind of move things around a little bit. So let's go ahead and I should probably move this too. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by negative 1. That's going to do the trick. Multiply by negative 1 and multiply the negative 1 by negative 1, which is going to give you a positive 1. Now what happens is when you multiply a difference by negative 1, you get the opposite. So in other words, this is going to be negative BC plus AD or AD minus BC. Make sense? So AD minus BC is 1. Awesome. So this is 1, and this is 7. So the answer is, because that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for the answer, obviously, is 7 plus 1i, or 7 plus i. So z times w bar is 7 minus i. z bar times w becomes 7 plus i. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, because it is real quick. So we are given z times w bar. Hopefully you memorized the problem at this point equals 7 minus i, and we're supposed to find this, oops, let's pretend I don't know the answer. We do, right? Okay. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but let me just tell you, if you have a complex number, you can basically conjugate both sides, or if you have an equation, right? So what happens if you basically, um, you know, conjugate both sides? Well, here's what happens. There's a really nice property which I want to talk about, but before that, let's see if we can find an alternative method like, could I just multiply these together? Is that going to help? Now, you can probably call this like, I don't know, x plus yi. You could also do a plus bi, but we already used it. And you, you can kind of multiply these together. z times z bar times w bar times w equals 7 minus i times x plus yi. I think this is going to be helpful. Let's see how that works. Well, here's the thing. This is going to be, actually not that, this is going to be a real number. It's just going to be the absolute value of z squared. And this is going to be the absolute value of w squared. Because remember, for the, square, com, for the absolute value, you have to square root it, right? And then you're going to get this equality, but I don't think you're going to be able to get the answer from here. Another alternative could be, you could absolute value both sides and then go off of that. But let me tell you the property uh, before too long, and that way we'll be done with the second method. Okay, so here's how the property works, and you can definitely prove that, and we kind of did. If you conjugate a product like ZW, that's just going to be Z bar times W bar. So you can basically bar each factor, which means something super nice. If you conjugate Z times W bar, that's going to be the same thing as z bar times w, which is what the answer is. In other words, if you just conjugate 7 minus i, you're going to get the answer, which is going to be 7 plus i. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.